Okay, we're now going to talk about the anatomy of elbow x-rays and answer the question, what anatomy can you see on AP and lateral elbow x-rays? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So a couple of things. I'm an anatomist, and so I'm going to be talking about really just the anatomy of the elbow joint, but I'm going to be doing it today using x-rays to teach elbow anatomy using x-rays. I said that twice, I think. Uh, but again, the perspective is from the anatomist, but not from radiologist perspective. And I'm going to show this anatomy through standard elbow series, an AP view like this, and then also a lateral view like this. Okay, so first the elbow AP view on the right-hand side. So we're going to place the arm and form onto the uh, image detector in an extended and supinated position like this. And there you can see with the uh, light around the side where this picture is going to be taken, you're going to get a picture that looks like this. Except what I'm going to do is we're going to turn it around and blow it up a little bit. And that's how we're going to be able to see is that's the view we're going to be taking a look at. If you can hear my son Gabriel, he's yelling because he's playing Fortnite with his friends because we're all stuck in the same place together <laughs> in the room next door. Anyways, that an uncomfortable laugh. So uh, first thing right there is you can see the medial epicondyle of the humerus where forearm flexors attach and the ulnar nerve courses underneath it. Next, if we have this one here, and that is the lateral epicondyle of the humerus where the forearm extensors. Next structure is this one right here, this fossa, the big fossa on the back distal end of the humerus. That is the olecranon fossa where the olecranon process goes in. That fossa is filled with the posterior fat pad. I'll talk about it a little bit later. Then you also have this structure right here, and that is the trochlea, the pulley, where the trochlear notch of the ulna articulates. That's part of the um, hinge joint of the elbow. And this thing here that looks like the top of a head, anatomists called it the capitulum, which means the head. It looks like a bald head if you look at the top. That's what articulates with the head of the radius to make the pivot joint. There is the coronoid process, that anterior process that goes into the coronoid fossa. It's part of the trochlear, it's the front of the trochlear notch. Then that structure right there is part of the ulna. That is the olecranon process. So again, what makes it tough is you've got a number of different parts of anatomy that you're going front to back, and this is why we do a lateral view as well. Olecranon process of the ulna, that's the part of the elbow that hits, that touches the uh, table when you put your elbows on a table. That is showing the head of the radius that, that looks like a wheel on its side, and that's what forms the pivot joint between the radius and ulna, and it also articulates the very top part, articulates with the capitulum of the humerus. And the joint right there is the radial ulnar joint, the proximal radial ulnar joint, and that's what forms that pivot, synovial pivot joint for pronation and supination. And that bump, that tuberosity on the radius, is simply called the radial tuberosity or radial tubercle. That's where the biceps um, brachii muscle inserts. And what enables, that's the attachment where the biceps contracts. It then causes the pivot of the radius that gives you the supination motion. So the AP view of the elbow is great at demonstrating distal humerus and then proximal radius and ulna. And it's also really good for showing the medial and lateral epicondyles and profile, and as well the articulations in the elbow, primarily the humeral ulnar and radial humeral joints. It's very good at that. Now let's take a look at the elbow in a lateral view of showing the right elbow. All right, so back again. My son just needed help with something, and uh, now I'm back. I'm doing the lateral elbow on the right side. Okay, this is where the patient sits alongside the table like this, and then their elbow is flexed at 90 degrees, and the medial part of the palm and form are flat on the detector with the thumb pointing to the ceiling, as you can see here, and then you can see that light around the arm where it is uh, putting the x-ray, and that's what the x-ray is going to look like from this lateral view. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make it a bit shorter, looking like this, and then I'm gonna zoom, and that's what it's gonna look like. You see, that's the part of the elbow that we're actually looking at, okay? There's the humerus, there's the radius, and there's the ulna. So that part of the humerus that we see here, very prominent, that's the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And so it, even though it's the lateral part that's seems where the uh, x-ray went through. The medial epicondyle is the most prominent, so we're looking through as if you're Superman, choom, right through the middle of the distal part of this humerus. Um, then this structure right here, it's really cool. It looks like a dinner plate. 
that's the trochlea. This is why it's called the pulley, because it makes this pulley-like structure where the trochlear notch of the ulna articulates, giving us the hinge joint. That structure right there, that is the capitulum or capitellum uh, of the uh, distal humerus, articulates the head of the radius, which there is the head of the radius right there. Then if that's the head of the radius, that makes that the neck of the radius. And then we're on to the ulna, which makes that the olecranon process. You can see the olecranon process is what you rest your elbows on the desk. And you can see that, that olecranon process. And then there is the one that looks like a beak of a crow. There's a coronoid process. So you have a coronoid process in the ulna and a coracoid process in the scapula. And then between the two of the ulna, you've got this big thing called the trochlear notch. That artic of the ulna that articulates with the trochlea of the humerus that gives us that hinge joint for flexion and extension. And I always remember the trochlear notch. Um, actually, I don't even remember why. I just remember there's <laughs> the trochlear notch. Hey, you're welcome. I'm there for you to help you remember this stuff. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to zoom in for a second. Now, if you remember in x-rays, the more bright it is, the more... Uh, the more dense and the darker it is, like if it's black, then you know it's air. If it's bright white, then you think it's bone or something really solid. Now, do you see this? It looks like it's more like dark right in front of the distal humerus there. Well, it's dark because this is adipose tissue where you notice the other gray around the side. That's actually the, that it's not white like bone, but it's not dark gray like this. This is adipose tissue. It's not as dense as the surrounding muscle. This is what's called the anterior fat pad. It's right in that coronoid fossa and it just sticks right up uh, inside this joint, uh, this joint capsule. Then back here, I put a dotted line because you cannot see the posterior fat pad because it's inside that olecranon fossa. Now what happens is, is if you see this really dark swelling in the front of the elbow and in the back of the elbow. Can you see that dark? That means it's not as dense because it's fat as the surrounding muscle. This is called the anterior and posterior fat pads. Okay. You see that right there? They call this the sail sign. It's the sail sign because it looks like sails. And this is where you mean you, you have some type of a joint effusion and there's swelling inside this, either blood or excess fluid, pushing these fat pads out from their hiding spaces in these olecranon and coronoid fossae. And that's what's pushing them out. So they call it the anterior and posterior. Uh, it's called the sail sign and the anterior and posterior fat pads. Okay. Now the anterior humeral line is right there. And what it does is it's this front line right along the anterior part of this humerus when the elbow is flexed. And it should go through that middle third of the uh, capitellum or the capitulum. Um, and this is important for showing normal elbow alignment. And also to see if and this is especially in the pediatric population, if there's a supracondylar fracture. And then another one is called the radio capitellar line. And that's between the neck of the radius and the capitulum. And you can see the capitulum rounded and those other dots from the neck of the radius. And this is also really good for showing elbow alignment, but also showing if there's a radial head dislocation. Again, primarily in the pediatric population that you'll see this. So there's those anterior humeral line and radio capitellar line that are used to help with own, uh, elbow alignment. Um, and then, so this lateral view of the elbow is really great at demonstrating the ulnar trochlear joint and the coronoid and olecranon processes, and also this anterior humeral and radio capitellar lines. It's very good at that. And that, my friends, is the anatomy of elbow x-rays in a nutshell. <laughs>